Hi, my name is Diana Vega. And Tatiana Burgess. And we're from Lake Region High School, and today we're going to make you cookies. Austrian jam, jam reefs, reefs, to be exact. Yeah, they're pretty good, too. Okay, we're going to start off with one cup, which is two sticks of soft, soft and butter. Make sure it's soft, not hard. It helps you in the long run when you're trying to cream it together. We're going to add about three-fourths of a cup of powdered sugar to our butter, one cup of butter. And we're going to cream this together slowly, making sure that all the sugar doesn't go all over you. And, and you're gonna, you can add it by parts. It'll help you in the long run of it not spilling over in the counter besides being in the mixture. If your butter are hard, you can like cut it into to smaller pieces, and it'll help <coughs> combine the mixture. Cream it cream together. Better, yeah. So as we get this clean, pretty good. We're gonna and when you're creaming, you're looking forward to a smooth, not lumpy mixture. And the butter tends to change a lighter color. And it'll get softer and fluffier and easier to work with, basically. When you know that it's cream, it'll get easier to blend in. Very easy, then it becomes soft. And you just want to scrape the edges, make, trying to make sure all the ingredients are incorporated together. Okay. So there you have it. Okay. And now we're going to add our one teaspoon of vanilla extract. It could be substituted for almond or any kind of other extract depending on the type of cookie you're making. That's all up to you. And we're gonna add our egg yolk because you need one egg separated. Get it in there. We're gonna blend it together to combine all of it, make it creamier. Okay. And now I'm gonna add the barber just in there. As I'm blending this, she's gonna add the flour, making it easier so that it won't go everywhere. A little bit at a time, so it won't get all over the counter. And that'll come in, make it thicker. And really, there's no right or wrong way to make do it. Do this. Just, it's really up to you and how easier it would be for you. So as we get this in, I'm going to keep blending until I think it's right. Okay. Okay. And right now, see, as you can see, the flour has incorporated into the, all the ingredients of the butter because you see it, it's more clear and there's really no white dust on top of it. So that's done. We're just gonna add about as like a handful of almonds or whatever. It's really to your choice. Depending if you're a nut fan or not, you could also use alternatives like pecans, almonds, but like we're in this case almonds we're using. Or you could also use basically any kind of nut. Or really you can omit that if you're al for any allergies or if you don't Logic like nuts. Reactions. Or if you don't like nuts at all. So we can kind of mix that together. Okay. And basically this is our dough and now you're just going to need to refrigerate this for about one or two hours or if it could refrigerate overnight depending if you're doing it a night before any special event. We're gonna roll our dough out to a, about an eighth of an inch thick, flouring this, your cloth or surface, whatever, and your dough very good, making sure the rolling pin doesn't stick to your dough, making it easier to work with, really. And now we're just gonna <coughs> roll, you can use any kind of cooking cutters, basically. It really depends on 
how you want your cookie. You can use stars or, but we're usually right now, we're gonna use little circle ones. And you wanna get a cookie cutter that's just like a regular oval shape like this. And you want another one with a circle or you can just find a little small one. So you can cut into the other half of the dough. And this makes about cookies. This is like a dozen cookies. And really, the, the there's no really there's no trick into making the cookies. It's really easy. Now we're gonna take our other half of the dough and you're gonna repeat the same thing as before, except for this time we're gonna use this cookie cutter which would help to show the marmalade that goes into the cookie. And I'll make it as a sandwich. Sometimes these things can be kind of hard to work with, but you have to just work with them. Okay, now we're going to grease our baking sheets. Okay. And we're going to grease two of our baking sheets. And a quick tip is the shinier the baking sheet, the browner the cookie. Because if you get a dark baking sheet, your cookie will tend to burn. And really, nobody wants to eat a burnt cookie. No, I. And I hope not you who wants to eat a burnt cookie. Okay. Okay, as soon and as And we're going to place done. our bottom, the bottom of the cookie. And we're going to place these about two inches apart. And this is basically going to be like the bottom layer because our cookie is going to be sandwiched. And we, you're going to take about a fourth of a cup of raspberry preserve or any preserve really, apricot, strawberry, any preserve of your choice. And this could be, this is the kind that we've got today. So this one we're going to use. And you're just going to spoon about half a teaspoon of raspberry, raspberry preserve in the middle, in the center of the cookie. And there are some awesome trying cookies. Not to, trying not to get it on the baking sheet. And we're gonna brush our, well the edges of the cookie with our egg white, and this is really gonna act like the glue and help the cookie pieces stick together. And you just wanna lightly brush it, you don't want to flood it with egg white. It's just like a light brush. Okay, and now we're gonna take the top part of the cookie and you're just gonna lightly press Press them together. Okay. And if this is optional as well. This is all goes if you're allergic to uh, the nuts, like I said before. But you could take the slivered almonds and decorate them. I like a little decorative. Or really, for festive, say Christmas or something, you can add food coloring, red or green, make it the cookies, different colors. and it can be more festive and make the wreaths even prettier. And sometimes you can cut them out. You don't really have to actually use these. You can use the stars in different kind of shapes 
and stuff just to make them look fancy and pretty. And like say for Christmas or Thanksgiving or something. Make little turkeys. Okay. Do you want to say, and you're just gonna repeat the same thing again. And as you can see, this is not really hard to make at all. Really anybody can make it as long as you just follow the instructions. And these two, we're not going to put nuts on these. Cause, and now we're going to put them in a 300, preheated 350 degree oven for about 7 to 10 minutes or until the cookies, the edges of the cookies are brown. And these are the finishing cookies and as you can see the edges are brown. And really, these cookies are worth the hard work because they're really delicious. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm Ashley. And we're from Lake Region High School. Today, for you, we're going to making some double chocolate hits. What you're going to be needing for this ingredient is one cup of mini morsel chocolate chips, a half teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, one and three-fourths cups unsifted flour, a half a cup of chocolate cocoa, one cup of sugar, a half a cup of buttermilk or water, your choice. We're going to be using buttermilk today, one egg, one teaspoon of vanilla, and two-thirds cups of margarine or butter. We're going to be using margarine. The first step in making the cookies, you're going to have to cream the sugar, the egg, the vanilla, and the butter. This is a very important step because it adds and it mixes all the ingredients together so you have one flavor and you'll have chunks of butter in your cookie which you're going to be eating or like chunks of sugar. It just makes it taste good and when it's ready, when you're done creaming it, you're going to not be able to tell any of the ingredients differently. It's going to look all like one big mixture. The butter is going to be blended in with the sugar. Now, instead of using hard butter, like 
This is kind of cold. You want it actually pretty warm. It's a lot easier to mix it if it's warmer. It doesn't it, get stuck in the... It's not going to get stuck in the mixers, and it's going to blend a lot easier and combine with the sugar and the vanilla a lot easier than as if it was cold and hard butter. The next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to add the milk to the cocoa mixture. We're going to blend this together first with a fork or a whisk, your choice. We're going to be using a fork because it's a lot quicker and easier. We're going to mix that together before we put it into the cream mixture. That way, you're going to have it all blended, and it's going to be a lot easier to mix it up with the cream mixture. It's going to blend a lot easier. Now, when you're doing this with the cocoa, you want to make sure that you're actually, before you mix the cocoa with the milk, you try to get all the lumps out of it, because then you won't have a lumpy mixture. It'll be nice and smooth to add to the cream. And it's good to keep a rag in hand just in case you spill it a lot. So it's kind of hard to um, mix the milk or the water, whatever you're using, with the cocoa because the cocoa is so dry. And then it is actually really, the milk, the buttermilk is actually really thick. So when you're trying to mix it, it's not going to like blend as good as it would with any other mixture, such as flour. It's not. So then once you scoop it off on the sides and everything, it's going to start to look like cake batter, actually. All right. Once you're done mixing the cocoa and the buttermilk together, you can add it to the cream mixture. And you can use a spatula to scoop it out of the bowl. Now for this step, what you're going to do is you're going to blend it together with an electric mixer, or you can use a fork, your choice, but it's just a lot quicker and easier if you do it with an electric mixer. Now the next step, what you're going to do, before you add the flour to the cocoa and cream mixture, you're going to add the salt and the baking soda together. And a way to do that, an easier way, is take a whisk and just whisk it all together to give it like five little turns and it'll be good. That way your flavors are all blended and you don't have a really salty cookie or a really cookie that's really rose really good from all the baking soda. And once that's done, you're gonna add it to the chocolate mixture now. Now, if you're using an electric mixer and you're going to stir in the flour, you want to start low on the speed because then the flour will fly everywhere. And then you can just start speeding up as you see that it starts to blend together. Now, the flour that you put in, you want to make sure the flour is unsifted. A lot of cookies call for sifted flour, but this one recipe calls for unsifted. Now, once that's all mixed it up, the last step, you're going to add your little chocolate chips. And with that, you can just fold it in with a spatula if you like, or a fork, whatever you choose is easier. Now, while she's going to be doing that, I'm going to grease the cookie sheet. For the cookie sheet, the brighter and the more silver looking it is, the brighter and browner your cookies are going to be. So you don't want a darker cookie sheet, like black or brown. Get like a silver or a non-stick one. It's a lot easier. And for your scoop, you can either use a spoon or you can use a miniature cookie ice cream scoop. It works a lot better. It has it makes the cookies have uniform shape and size and look a lot better in a presentation. All right, now on the cookie sheet, you want to put your cookies at least two inches apart. That way they don't melt into each other when they're cooking and they get stuck together when you take them out. Now for this recipe, the cookies, the oven should be set to 350 for the cookies. And now we're going to pop them in the oven. And they're going to cook for 8 to 10 minutes and you can take them out. And when they're done, you have to set them on a cookie sheet so they can cool right before you eat them. 
I really think you're gonna enjoy these cookies. If you're a chocolate lover, I really think you'll like them. I'm Aaron Shepard. And I'm Chris Vega. And we go to Lake Region High School, and today we're going to be making chocolate pixies. To make this recipe, we need two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, one half teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of baking powder, half a cup of walnuts, three eggs, and four ounces of melted unsweetened chocolate, and one fourth cup of margarine. First, we're going to mix the two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, the baking powder, and the salt. And then the half cup of walnut. The three eggs will be next. You want to mix this till like all the liquid is gone from the eggs. After all that, you want to add your chocolate. And using a straight edge spatula, you're going to we're going to get all the chocolate from the sides from the bowl. When you melt your chocolate, you want to melt it over light heat and uh, stir constantly so that it doesn't burn. You want to mix all the chocolate together with all the other ingredients you added. Alright, and then you want to chill it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. And this dough that's already been chilled will will be dipping in 
powdered sugar in one inch balls and we'll be using a cookie sheet to put them on. You want to make sure that the powdered the ball is powdered very good so that it has a lot of flavor. And you don't want to make your balls too big because then they'll cook unevenly. Uh, you want to make sure you use a shiny pan because if you use a dark pan, it'll make the cookies real dark colored. All right, now we're going to throw these in the oven at 300 degrees for about 20 minutes. Uh, this recipe cooks about 48 cookies and they're a delicious treat for the entire family and thank you. Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Naisha. And we're from Lake Region High School. Today we're going to be making almond butter cookies. And first of all, we're going to start with butter, one cup. Sugar, three-fourth cup. One teaspoon of almond extract. All-purpose flour, two cups. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. One-fourth of sugar. We, first of all, we're going to start out with mixing our one cup of butter. And instead of using butter, if you don't have any on hand, you can use canola oil that has come right out of the refrigerator. All right, and once you put the butter in, you're going to want to chop it up, make it smaller pieces so that it's easier to mix. Once you start mixing, you're going to add your sugar, and you're going to want to mix this on medium speed Add all of your sugar, and you add your almond extract. And now she's going to mix it until it's creamy. Say. 
with the recipe that we're using, this you can make multiple kinds of cookies. You can, when to do your balls, you can put finely chopped almonds on them, roll them in finely chopped almonds. Um, you can do just multiple things. You can frost them. All right, ready? All right, now we're gonna add our baking powder. Our one fourth teaspoon of salt. And as always, when you're doing flour, this flour is sifted. You add only small amounts at a time. Instead of making, rolling your cookies into balls as we're going to do today, you can use a cookie presser to make different shapes or just any kind of shape that you would like to. As you mix the cookies, you're going to want to use a rubber scraper or a wooden spoon to get your dough off the sides of your bowl. All right, now our dough is ready. And when you're using blenders, you're gonna wanna take whatever you use to scrape the bowls and get it out of your blender. Always turn your blender off, never leave it on. Today we're going to be using a shiny cooking sheet. You always want to use shiny to make sure that your cookies turn out nice and light brown. If you use a dark cookie sheet, your cookies will be more likely to be burnt and dark and very unattractive. And before you make your cookies into the two inch balls or one inch balls that you're going to make, you're going to want to push everything, mush it to a corner of the bowl to make sure everything is mixed in very properly. We're using an ungreased cookie sheet today. All right. Now what you're gonna do, get about a teaspoon in your hand, give or take a little, and then you're going to roll it into a ball, and you're gonna place them about two inches apart from each other. All right. While she's doing that, you got to take her glass or a plastic cup, dip it in a butter, then dip it in the sugar, and dump it onto the cookie. And keep doing that over and over again. When you're working with kitchen and foods, you always want to make sure that you wash your hands before as we did. And then you want to make sure that your nails and everything are trimmed and neat. Try to make your balls and size of your cookies the same size so that you have even proportions of each one. And 
on average. I think that this batter actually makes about 24 cookies. So you'll be good for a small party or something. All right, and before you do this, you're going to make sure that your oven has been preheated to 400 degrees. That's our cookie sheet. And now we will put them in the oven to bake for about six to eight minutes. All right, and after putting them in the oven, we have already made a batch that has been cooled in there on the wire rack. You always make sure you take your cookies out of the oven on time and place them on a wire rack to cool. Never use them or decorate them as we're going to until they are fully cooled. Now today, we're going to be making Christmas trees on our cookies. And this is melted chocolate chips, a half a cup, and two teaspoons of shortening. We did that before when we made our first batch of cookies. And you place it in here, you melt it in a double boiler, and you're just going to make a slight hole so that you can decorate your cookies. And now you're just going to do it. You can make any kind of design that you would like to. We chose to make Christmas trees. You could make pumpkins. Anything that you would like for what kind of season you would like. All right, my name is Tim Young, and today I'm going to make brownie mounds. All right, right here we got one-third cup of butter, three-fourths cup of sugar, one-third cup of white corn syrup, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, uh, half a cup of walnuts, and one and two-thirds cup of all-purpose flour sifted. All right. Now in this bowl right here, we're gonna mix, we're gonna cream the butter and the sugar together. So, go ahead and get that ready. All right. 
right, since that's done, now we're going to add the corn syrup and the egg to this mixture. Now, over here, I got three unsweetened ounces of chocolate that I'm about to mix into this. Already cooked. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in here. We're going to stir this in. All right. Then we're going to combine the flour and the asterisk. All right. Mix it in a little bit more. Then I'm going to combine the flour, the baking powder, and the salt. Go ahead and mix that in. And we're going to mix it in here. Then we're going to stir in the walnuts. All right. Then we got our grease baking sheet right here. And we got our little ice cream scooper. And we're just going to scoop them two inches apart onto the baking sheet. All right, now we got our baking sheet with the cookies on them. We're going to place them in the oven at 325 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. I got our fresh batch of cookies right here, and they go good with milk. I think you'll love them.
Hello, I'm Nick Wilson. I go to Lake Region High School, and today I'm going to be making snickerdoodles for you. Oh, we're going to start off with the ingredients. I have uh, my one, one half cup of sugar and my one cup of shortening already in there. I got my um, two eggs right there, my two and three four cup of flour, my two tablespoons of cream of tartare, and my one tablespoon of salt. And I have my sugar and cinnamon mixture, we will be using later. All right, first we're going to start off with creaming the sugar and the shortening and the eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the eggs. Make sure you don't get any shells in it. Remember when you cream, you want to keep mixing until you can't tell the difference between all the ingredients you're supposed to be creaming. So it should all be looking kind of yellowish in my case. can't tell the difference between that. Next, you want to sift your flour. My flour is already sifted. So you want to add the salt to the flour and mix it with a fork before you do anything else. And you add your cream of tartar to your flour. And you're going to add the flour to the cream mixture slowly, and you're going to beat alternately. Got a little bit more to go. All right, get all the dough off the beater. Next, what you want to do is you want to take, well, you can let it chill if you want, which makes, the, makes it easier to handle the dough when you're shaping it. Or you can just take some of the dough, make it into a ball. Make it nice and round and dip it into your mixture. I'm using a mix of cinnamon and sugar. It doesn't really matter how much you use because you just want enough to make sure you can cover up the dough. And you're going to use an ungreased baking sheet to put it on like so. You want to make the balls about two inches apart on the baking sheet. Now we've got the pan all full. We're going to take it to the oven and bake it at 425 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes.
I have a finished batch right here. Uh, the recipe yields about one dozen. I came out with 11. And it's a good snack for the kids when they, right when they come home from school and they want something quick to eat, something sweet. And I hope you like them. Welcome to Kathleen Kitchen. I'm Nathaniel. I'm Megan. And I'm Shelby. And we're going to do a cooking session for you today. Today we're making puppy chop. So let's get off with our first list of ingredients and utensils. Okay, well first you'll need a large mixing bowl and a half box of any texturized cereal. We use the Publix brand. Then we have a cup and a half of powdered sugar. We have our cup of Nestle's chocolate chips. And then one fourth a cup of creamy peanut butter in a medium size or small saucepan to melt the chocolate chips and peanut butter together on low on the stove. So as she goes and does that, we're going to explain what she's going to be doing right now. So she's going to go over, like she said before, mm -hmm. at, with the stove on low, and she's going to let the chocolate and peanut butter melt together to make a unison. Now we're going to take the texturized cereal and pour it into the large mixing bowl. Okay, so shall we should be done with the chocolate chip and peanut butter melting together. And as she comes over, we're going to safely put this right together. Nice and smooth, wow. making sure we get every drop. Remember mm -hmm. that this pan is really hot. Don't burn yourself, little kids. And adults. Cause yes, to adults too. too. And remember, chocolate burns very easily. Yeah. So make sure you have it on low. Or you could always try a double boiler. Yes. Okay, All right. now that we have okay. our, <laughs> okay, so now that we have our chocolate and our rice cereal in, we're just going to mix it right in. This is the hands-on part. Yeah. Nice and dirty again. Every single piece. You want to make sure that every piece of cereal has a layer of chocolate mm -hmm. and that creamy peanut butter all over. Mmm, smells sure. delicious, doesn't mm, it? It does. Now this requires some chocolate. muscle, so hope you got some. So let's have Shelby do that. <laughs> okay, while she's stirring in the peanut butter and chocolate, we're gonna just gently pour in some of the powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. It gives it more of a sweet taste instead of like people like me don't really like chocolate. It gives us an alternative. So just Adds a little kick to it. Yeah. yeah. Now, how much powdered sugar is that? This is a cup and a half of powdered sugar. Okay. Now you want to save just a little bit more because mm -hmm. at the end you just want to sprinkle it over to make mm -hmm. it look a little bit decorative. Yes. Okay. okay. Okay, so now that we have it pretty much mixed together, mm -hmm. now you can grab a pan, any other decorative pan that you would like, like seasonal greetings. Mm -hmm. Like right now it's Christmas time. And so. so we have chosen a part. Would you like to get our final piece? <laughs> I would love to. It's in the fridge. It's in our fridge. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to chill that? this for 30 minutes after 
adding the final touches of the powdered sugar. Okay. And this is our final product. Nice and pretty and tasteful. <laughs> And now the pan, you can take it to any place you want to do for a family get-together, a church event, Christmas time as we chosen, um, Thanksgiving, anything that you would like. And it's really good gifts for the season right now. And it's great to ship. It's really light. So I hope that you guys have a good time with your puppy chow. And remember, I'm Nathaniel. I'm Megan. And I'm Shelby.